I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this reaction, we have a carboxylic acid reacting with what's known as an aziridine treated with an acid to make oxazoline. So these compounds, in case you've never seen them before, are what's known as an aziridine and an oxazoline. And the first step in this mechanism is actually going to be to protonate the aziridine using our acid. So a protonated version of this will be formed where now we have a positive charge on that nitrogen and then we still have the rest of our three-membered ring here with our two methyl groups on it. And as you probably predicted, this is gonna be a very unstable molecule. So this three-membered ring is gonna have a lot of strain. Now we've made this positively charged, which makes it even more unstable. And therefore what will happen is actually this bond will just open up to place these electrons on nitrogen, leaving behind a carbocation. So once this opens up, what we're left with is going to be a neutral amine at this position, where now those electrons that were previously in this carbon to nitrogen bond are located as a lone pair on nitrogen. And then you have the rest of your chain where you have these two methyl groups which are helping to stabilize this carbocation through hyperconjugation. And it's at this stage that our carboxylic acid comes into play where these electrons located as lone pairs on oxygen can act as a nucleophile for this carbocation. And this is how we make our new carbon to oxygen bond, where now we're gonna still be left with this neutral amine at this position with a lone pair on it. And now we have these two methyl groups, which also have now been attached to this carbon to oxygen bond. And everything else is mostly going to be the same as part of that original carboxylic acid structure. But remember, now we have placed the positive charge on this oxygen, and we have removed the positive charge from what previously used to be a carbocation. However, notice that we have accounted for our charge balance in this reaction. And what this is gonna do, just like protonating carbonyl oxygens, is turbocharge the carbonyl carbon, making it highly susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So in fact, the next reaction will be this lone pair of electrons from nitrogen will come and attack this carbonyl carbon position, kicking up these pi electrons in order to make this a neutral oxygen, but notice now this is gonna make a positively charged nitrogen. And this is actually how we close the ring to end up with this five-membered ring, because notice if we start counting at the oxygen, this is one, two, three, four, five atoms as part of this ring, where this was one, two, three, four, five in our oxazoline. So the product of this transformation is going to be that ring that we have now formed, except for a few remaining pieces that we need to go through to get to our final product. So we have our nitrogen bond here, and remember it still has two hydrogens on it, so therefore it's going to be positively charged. And then at this position we have our OH group which came as part of this carboxylic acid. And then from here, what can happen is a proton transfer, where one of the protons that is on this nitrogen gets removed, and instead a proton gets transferred to this alcohol, which is going to make it a great leaving group. So we're gonna end up with an alcohol that was protonated at this position, which is going to mean there are three bonds at that position. And because of that, that's going to make that highly susceptible to being removed as part of our next step. So remember a proton transfer has occurred between the nitrogen and hydrogen and it has been transferred over through ox to oxygen on this alcohol, making this a great leaving group. And that process left behind a lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen, which can now come down to make a new carbon to nitrogen double bond, and that is actually how you free up water. So the product of this transformation will be mostly towards our final product, except for the fact that now, since we have made this nitrogen have four bonds to it, this is going to mean that it is going to be positively charged, which means that we need to undergo another proton transfer where this hydrogen can be removed from anything that's swimming around in our reaction to undergo that proton transfer and give us our final product. So remember, the first step in this reaction was to protonate the aziridine, 
giving us an opportunity to make a stabilized carbocation at this position, which is stabilized through hyperconjugation from these other R group substituents. And that carbocation is going to be susceptible to nucleophilic attack, even from things that would generally be considered weak nucleophiles, like this oxygen on the carboxylic acid, which has lone pairs which can attack that carbocation. And then from there, that turbocharges the carbonyl carbon position, making it susceptible to nucleophilic attack, giving us an opportunity to do a proton transfer to make a great leaving group. Subsequently, we can have imine formation where this lone pair of electrons can form a new carbon to nitrogen double bond, kicking off water as a great leaving group. And then finally, this one last proton transfer where this hydrogen gets removed from a base to make our oxazoline. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.